Um, I guess while I'm doing this, let me, let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Michael Fiedler. I am a committer on the Eclipse Leo project. I'm also uh, the lead for the OSLC Automation Work Group and uh, participate in a few of the other work groups as well. I'm sharing these. And I sh should be sharing a power some slides right now. Can you see them? Not yet. I saw a flash. And I've got it. OK. So let's kick this off. So the, the purpose of today's discussion is to um, give everyone an uh, overview of what's of the Eclipse Leo project. You know, how did it start? Uh, what's the content in it? What are our plans going forward uh, here in 2012? And uh, also, you know, we'll get into uh, perhaps some demos of some of the content that's in the Leo project. Uh, so a little bit of background on Eclipse Leo. I think, you know, as you heard uh, Sean mentioning before, you know, OSLC, at its heart, it has uh, specifications that help um, help us uh, address integration problems in different domains. So we have a core specification in OSLC that tells us know, how to use HTTP, how to use RDF, how to define resources. Then we have domain specifications for things like change management and requirements management that tell us, you know, what resources are there for those domains? You know, what, um, what do change requests look like? What do test cases look like? You know, different artifacts in the lifecycle management uh, arena. Tells us, you know, a little bit about what, what service providers' capabilities are in those domains. What do we expect uh, OSLC? integrations in a particular domain to address. And, and specifications are great. I mean, those are the underpinning of all of OSLC. But, but, but what do you do with the specification? I mean, that's just something that you can read. Uh, you, um, it, it tells you, you know, a lot of good information, a lot of good definitions, uh, things like that. But how, how do you use it for real integrations? So there's commercial tools that are available with OSLC APIs. I mean, you can start and you know, read the documentation for some of those tools learn how to uh, start interacting with their APIs. Um, we have a, um, there's a lot of organizations out there adopting OSLC that, that have their own integrations that they've developed in-house. So, you know, based on the specification, it provides enough information where you can start writing, you know, from scratch or with some uh, assistance of other libraries, start writing your own integrations. Um, also, a lot of educational and research institutions are developing their tool integrations. Um, what we thought, though, was that it would be good to have, you know, a single open source um, project where we could provide sample code, SDKs, tests, you know, artifacts like that around OSLC, you know, have the community contribute, you know, uh, where they chose, the, the integrations that they developed, the libraries that they were using. And so Eclipse Leo is, you know, what is what we want, is the project that we have. Uh, to capture some of those resources, things like, as I mentioned before, the samples, the SDKs, the tests. Um, the screen that I'm showing here is just the, uh, the the landing page for Eclipse Leo. I've got links later on in the presentation if you want to go out and take a look. But it's basically eclipse.org/leo. I'm not going to read through this, but this is the uh, the home page on Eclipse of the Leo project. Um, so what is Eclipse Leo? How did it get started? Just I'm not going to do a huge long history lesson, but here's a just some items that you might be interested in. So it's it's mainly an evolution of different OSLC tool repositories that were were in existence. Uh, there were some on SourceForge and in some in, that were private to members of the OSLC communities that they wanted to get out and make public. Um, the project was approved by the Eclipse PMC last year. And the stated goal of it is providing an SDK to enable the adoption of OSLC specifications, um, including code libraries, reference implementations, test suites, and samples. Um, what is Eclipse Leo not? So it is not a plug-in for the Eclipse IDE, and it's not related to OSGI. So when people think of Eclipse, a lot of times they think of you know the platform itself or of plugins that you know run inside of the Eclipse IDE to do different tasks. That, that's not what Eclipse Leo is. 
I mean, it can certainly be used to develop those types of artifacts, but um, Leo itself is intended to be more standalone um, assets, libraries, and samples uh, around OSLC integrations. Um, Eclipse was chosen as the home for the project because it has a very mature governance model. Eclipse has been around quite a while, um, has very well established processes for um, you know, how we bring new contributors into a project uh, and has a very well established IP policies. <clears throat> An additional um, reason for choosing Eclipse is that um, a lot of participants in the OSLC workgroups were already active in Eclipse. I've listed a few of them there. There's certainly others. Um, so it, it was a friendly place for um, existing members of the OSLC community to start participating in an open source project. And finally, the, the content of the project is one thing I wanted to note is that it's dual licensed under both the Eclipse public license which, if folks are familiar with Eclipse, um, that's probably the more familiar license. That's what most of the Eclipse platform is licensed under. And uh, there's also an Eclipse distribution license, which is more of a BSD-style license. And folks that want to contribute or use um, code from Eclipse, um, you, get, you can choose whichever license is um, appropriate for your organization. So whichever license is uh, more suitable for you, you can uh, select it. So let's talk a little bit about what's in LEO today and what our plans are uh, going forward with LEO. So the initial code contributions went live last year. And so what's out there today? So there's some reference implementations for OSLC, for change requirement architecture management. Um, folks that have familiar with LEO might know them as the RIOs, R-I-O, Reference Implementation for OSLC. Um, they're meant to be samples of OSLC implementations um, used for to help people start prototyping, start experimenting with OSLC. What are some of the you know coding techniques that are useful in OSLC implementations? Um, could be a possible starting point for new adapters or new service providers. And uh, they were co-developed with the OSL te test suite to you know, make sure that both were keeping in step with each other. Also out there today, there's um, an OSLC test suite and some uh, reporting tools that go along with that. Uh, the goal of the test suite is to uh, measure an implementation's compliance against the OSLC core and domain specifications. So, you know, how well is my implementation doing um, against the specification? Uh, the test suites are also a great way of just improving the quality of an implementation by finding bugs. As I mentioned before, you know the, the suites and the reference implementations that are out there were sort of co-developed. It's a good way to find uh, bugs in each of them. Uh, the test suite currently covers uh, uh, core and change management, and other domains are going to follow. The initial focus of the test suites is on the must items, so we really want to get good coverage of what are the must items that a OSLC implementation must support? And then we'd like to enhance the test suite as uh, we go on with some of the should and may items, or as many of them as we can do. But the, the, the real focus is on the must items right now. And we want to be able to provide reports that give summary and detailed results. So you know, how do I interpret uh, the results of running the test suite? Um, something that could be you know, perhaps published or, or presented to someone something uh, other than the actual result details. And um, out there today, we also have a couple of samples. There's a um, change management adapter for uh, Bugzilla, an open source change tracking tool. And there's also a change OSLC change management adapter for Microsoft Excel, uh, basically you know, exposing the rows in an Excel spreadsheet as change requests, being able to map the columns in, in the spreadsheet to OSLC attributes. So, um, I'd encourage people to take a look at those samples um, if you're interested in them. Um, so that, that that was the initial contribution, you know, back in 2011. Um, plans for new content in 2012. We've recently uh, um, committed 
new code library called OSLC for J SDK. It's still under development, but it, it's out there now in source code and is at, at a point where it can be used for people that want to start doing implementations based on it. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the plans for bringing it to more of a final uh, library. Um, Mike, I'm sorry if I can interrupt. There, there sure. was a question. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Any chat? It, it Please interrupt how, me with any questions. How can we influence the must, should, or may categories? Uh, I guess um, influence them in terms of what things are must, should, and mays and yeah. specs. Right. Um, par participate in the OSLC work groups for sure for that one. Um, influencing which ones are covered in the test suites, I would say um, open Bugzilla requests for things that you'd like to see the test suite covered, and we certainly welcome any code contributions to the test suites that, that cover those items. Yeah, that would be the best way to make sure that uh, things get covered. Right. To, <laughs> to write the code. Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> that's always a good thing. <laughs> All right, thanks. Okay, sure. And please just jump in if there's any questions in the chat. I can't see it right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, in 2012, we'd also like to have libraries for technologies other than Java. I think as folks know, OSLC is certainly not tied to any particular technology or platform. We don't have any affinity for any particular programming language. HTTP and RDF are the, you know, the underpinnings of OSLC, but there's certainly libraries for those in many, many programming environments. So, uh, you know, we're certainly looking for code contributions uh, in any of those areas that I listed or in, you know, any areas that people would like to make contributions in. Um, in the test suites going forward, we want to increase the domain coverage. So I mentioned that, you know, CM and core were the main things covered now. And, and using the core tests, you can test um, Provide you know any provider you could test a quality management provider at least it's compliance with the core part of the spec using the test suites today, but we would also like to add you know for example in quality management um, additional tests to test the QM specific artifacts and QM specific must requirements as well as the other OSLC uh, domains. So that's another area where we're certainly looking for uh, additional contributions. And within uh, a specification, we want to increase the coverage. So as well as going wider across the domains, go deeper within each of the domains. And we want to move these tests towards being a true compliance test suite for OSLC. Whether or not that's something formal, you know, that that's not really a priority right now. But we want the, the must coverage to be as complete as possible so that service provider um, implementers can uh, accurately gauge their compliance with OSLC. That's the main goal. Um, additional samples for 2012 that we'd like to see. Um, want to get some good samples around OAuth. Um, today there's, uh, with the Bugzilla adapter, there's a very good example of using you know, OAuth to uh, integrate with other change management or any OSLC provider uh, using OAuth. But, uh, we'd like some additional samples um, on the consumer side as well as the provider side to, to help people with that technology as it's not always the most uh, straightforward thing to deal with. Um, like some addition, we'd like additional sample integrations with Microsoft products, additional sample integrations with Rational Jazz products, and with you know with anything, any any place that people feel they would like to contribute um, sample integrations, uh, we would welcome that. You know, the way to do that is, again, just open a Bugzilla request on Eclipse and uh, maybe send an email to the Leo Dev mailing list to let folks know uh, what you're interested in working on. Um, we're also working on an OSLC workshop and tutorial. Uh, we would like to get the code for that out there on Leo as well so that the, the workshop's available to anybody. Okay. So where is Leo at today? I talked a little bit about the content that's there, but as I mentioned, you know, a lot of that content is still under development. It's, it's usable today. You know, we have many folks using the test suites today, folks using OSLC for J to do active uh, OSLC integration development. So the, the artifacts that are out there now, the assets that are out there are, are usable. 
but we're working towards you know getting them more formally packaged and completing some of the development effort on them. So the first, um, I've got a link there to the project plans, but the first milestone we had was at the end of 2011. I think I mentioned the content that was uh, uh, contributed then. And the focus was really on the test suites, getting the, the cover, coverage up to speed and getting the test suite reports working. Um, the second milestone is you know what we're in right now. Uh, the main goal for the second milestone was to get OSLC for J contributed so that people could start using it and to get um, some sample implementations that used OSLC4J out there so that people you know, didn't just have an SDK, but they actually had running examples of how to use it. Uh, we also have gotten a start on some of the release engineering work we need to build um, you know, libraries that folks can consume in their, uh, in their integrations. And uh, as I mentioned, we're continuing the test suite work as well, going uh, broader across domains, and then continuing to make improvements to some of the core tests. So what, what's not there yet? As of today, you need to download the OSLC for J SDK and test suite from source. So you basically need to um, you know, create your own a clone of the Git repositories that are out there on eclipse.org, download the source, and build it locally. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but there's a, a getting started page uh, out on the wiki that tells you how to do that. But, but our goal is, of course, to create consumable jars that you know integrations can use, that developers can use, as well as integrations. Um, so we're working on publishing, getting the jars published to Eclipse's Maven repository. Um, once we have a GA version of Eclipse, we would also look to get that on, on Maven Central. But while it's under development, we'll be using Eclipse's Maven repository. And to get started, you can go to the wiki page. OK, so now I'd like to talk uh, in a little bit more detail about some of the content that's in LEO today. I um, want to cover the test suites. Then I want to do um, a pretty good coverage of OSLC for J, and then talk a little bit about the samples. So the test suites, I think this first part I've you know, already covered. Um, core and CM is the main stuff that's out there now. We're working on QM, um, looking for contributions in other uh, domains as well. Uh, one good use of the test suite for, for developers is um, using, looking at the test suite code as an OSLC consumer. So the test suite provides a pretty good example of how to interact with an OSLC provider. Um, it doesn't yet do the OAuth that I mentioned, although we would like to add that to the test suites. But it, but it does give you some example patterns for you know, the, the HTTP methods for using RDF uh, when working with an, with an OSLC implementation. So in addition to just being uh, a test suite, it's also a pretty good sample of an OSLC consumer as well if you're interested in trying to uh, integrate with a, an OSLC provider that way. Uh, there is a, a wiki page out there for getting started with the tests and the reports, how to run them, uh, how to create the reports, things like that. I um, talked a little bit about the uh, the reports. Uh, they're, they're still under development, but here's an example of what they look like right now. So being able to provide uh, both an overview and details, uh, you can see from you know, Right here, the OSLC service provider, that this is an example of the output of our uh, JIRA adapter that we've created, an OSLC adapter for the JIRA change tracking system. Um, the wording, you know, we're not sure this level one, level two, level three stuff, if that's, if we're really going to stick with that, but that's what's there right now to try to give, uh, you know, which levels of compliance. As I mentioned right now, we're focusing on the must requirements. So that's one goal of the test suites is uh, to act as a compliance assessor. The second goal of the test suites is to act as an adoption accelerator to, um, you know, to help you move your integrations along, show you the areas 
uh, that need to be improved in an OSLC integration. So uh, provide troubleshooting tips. You know, if you find bugs in your um, implementation, trying to find areas to go look at. Uh, providing test strategy guidance, um, helping set up and configure the tests, and helping to learn the OSLC specs. I mean, running the test suites against a um, against an implementation is a great way to just you know learn more about the technical details of OSLC. Um, let me switch over to Eclipse there. I'm just going to quickly run the test suite just to show you uh, uh, what it looks like. I mean, the tests are very quick to run, uh, depending on your you know your connectivity. Um, they're easy to configure, and they can be run either as just straight JUnit tests, or they can be run as uh, uh, with the reports, as I mentioned before. So I'm in my Eclipse workspace here. I hope this shows okay for folks. Let me. Scale that down a little bit. So what I have running in my workspace here. Mike, so, so far I'm just seeing your presentation still. So. Okay. Let me make sure. Seen anything yet? No. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Maybe you have to go out of presentation mode on the uh, Excel. I or did. The, uh, PowerPoint. Oh. Let, let me do this. Let, if the presentation's showing, let me push forward with the presentation, and then I'll come back at the end to Eclipse and maybe demo a couple different things all at the same time right. instead of trying to jump back and forth. So let me. Do you, do you see a slide that says OSLC for J overview? No. Great. Do you want to stop sharing? Yeah, do you want to pause the recording? Uh, that'll leave us with two recordings. We'll just add it to that afterward. Okay, that's fine. Let me stop sharing and start it again. I don't seem to be able to stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Try one more time. Okay, I'm going to try to sign out of the conference. Mike, to have to have the um, owner take it away from you, Mike. Okay. Um, no, it, it doesn't allow me. Yeah, it says that the moderator's request to control black control. Please stop sharing, but I'm not able to do that. Okay, it says, if I try to sign out, it says it should give control back to you, Sean. So All right, there we go. I think it's our best shot. Okay, I'm out. I do have control. Okay, I'm going to get back in. I had uploaded the PDF, so I've just displayed slides. 13 now. Okay, I'm back in. I see everybody. I can make you a presenter. Meanwhile, you can, I think, continue to talk to this slide. Okay. So slide 13, OSLC for J overview. I can actually see your screen now, Sean. So, um, so I want to talk a little bit about OSLC for J. So, you know, the initial stuff that we had committed to Leo, 
uh, there were some good reference implementations, good samples. The test suites were, uh, you know, very useful as well. But we really didn't have a, a library that developers could start using to do um, development on OSLC integrations. There wasn't uh, any formal place where there was a library. You know, certainly uh, different products, different tools, different uh, organizations developing um, OSLC implementations had come up with. Uh, you know, their own libraries or their own, you know, suites of code that they were using to do their integrations. Um, but we received from, you know, one of the contributors to the com <coughs> to the Leo project uh, a fairly complete library called OSLC for J. You know, it's, it's by no means absolutely complete at this point, but it, it's complete enough to start doing um, basing implementations on. And we actually do have uh, several OSLC implementations underway that are, are using OSLC for J today. So it was far enough along that we uh, said it was ready, you know, ready for contribution and ready for folks to start using. Uh, so it you know, can be used for both provider and consumer implementations. It's based on um, using Java uh, annotations and JAXRS for REST services. Uh, it does include a change management reference implementation and some other samples. As I mentioned before, we wanted to make sure there was stuff that people could start using as a basis for their own implementations. Uh, it does have a modular structure, um, project structure, uh, to avoid forcing dependencies on specific technologies. We, we do use some um, technologies out of the box that I'll talk about, uh, but we, they're they're included in such a way that if you want to use alternate technologies, you can. So, you know, out of the box, it's using Apache Wink uh, for that should say Apache Wink for uh, the red the jet. Go ahead. Sorry, are you on? Are you still on slide 13? No. Nope. Oh, sorry, I jumped ahead. Yeah. So there's a next button at the top. You can push that to get to slide 14. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's all. If you don't want to go through sharing, you can just push next. It's the PDF. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oops, let me go back. Okay. Um, yeah, apologies for that. So, it's used out of the box. It's using Jenna and Apache Wink to provide RDF, JSON, and JAX uh, RS capabilities. So the, those providers, if you will, are already there in OSLC for J. But they're included in such a way that if you want to write your own providers for other uh, technologies, such as OpenRDF uh, and Jersey for the uh, for the Jenna and the JAXRS pieces, uh, it's, the projects are structured in such a way that you could do so. But you know, understand those providers. Uh, you you would be someone would be responsible for writing them. They're not there today. Uh, so what do you know, basically OSLC for J and JAXRS together? Um, handle certain aspects of coding an OSLC uh, integration for you. So it, it will take care of um, creating your resource shapes uh, and creating your service provider documents. You don't have to hand code shapes or hand code service providers uh, or catalogs. I'll talk a little more about the catalog in a bit. Um, it provides a marshalling of Java objects to RDF. That could either be XML or JSON. And it also provides unmarshalling of uh, RDF, either XML or JSON, to Java objects. So the, the core concept of OSLC for J is that you provide um, plain old Java objects to represent your uh, OSLC resources, something like a change uh, request. You provide a plain Java object that represents a change request, and then you annotate it with uh, some uh, OSLC annotations that I'm going to show you in, in a bit. And from those annotations, the um, OSLC for J can create you know, additional OSLC artifacts, such as um, resource shapes and service provider documents, as well as it can uh, help you marshal and unmarshal those Java objects to RDF. And I'll go through some examples of that here in a bit. Um, it also, the JAXRS side of it, helps you map the REST service calls you know, the traditional HTTP get, post, put, delete that OSLC uses to Java methods. So you provide Java methods that you want invoked when someone tries to get your OSLC resource and annotate it with the um, correct JAXRS annotations. 
and you know OSLC for J will uh, help those methods get invoked when the uh, the REST calls come in. And so, what does OSLC for J and JAXRS not handle for you? Um, it doesn't handle persistence of your OSLC resources, so or business logic for mapping those Java objects to native resources. So if you're trying to build an OSLC adapter, for instance, for you know a tool that you have, maybe a, a quality management tool, you want to OSLC enable it, um, you would be responsible for coding the business logic of when requests come in for an OSLC test plan, for instance, you know, what needs to be done to interact with your tool? Maybe it has its own native APIs or some way of representing test plans. Um, that would be the business logic that has to be written to uh, to enable the tool uh, to work with OSLC for J. I'll go through some examples of that as well. The, um, the, the examples that are out there today you know, really don't have that business logic. We have a change management sample implementation, and it does all the right things from an OSLC uh, point of view, but it's it's not a real change tracking tool. It just you know stores the change requests locally, and you know returns them if folks ask for them or allows them to create new ones. Uh, OSLC for J enables you to, to put that business logic code in there, um, and today it does not have you know full and automatic support for the OSLC query syntax. But we are working on uh, some additional classes for OSLC for J to, to help folks deal with OSLC query. Um, that can sometimes be a complex area of uh, implementing an integration. So let me go to the next slide. So I, I've got a, you know, some snippets of sample code in here, and let's just talk about a couple of them quickly. I just wanted to give some examples of you know, what are the core things that you need to do to use OSLC for J to uh, create an integration? You know, one one thing you can certainly do is use the the change management or any of the other samples as a starting point. You know, copy and paste those into a new project, and you know, start modifying them to get started. Uh, one thing you have to do is uh, for the JAXRS piece of it, you have to extend the JAXRS application class. So you at least need a starting point to tell. Uh, Tell JAXRS where to you know be able to find your uh, application. This is really a pretty simple thing. The, the first two steps are more you know housekeeping, uh, bookkeeping type things that you have to do just to to play in the game. So you have to tell JAXRS uh, that you're there. The second thing you have to do is I think folks are familiar with the use of um, namespaces. Folks that are familiar with OSLC are uh, aware of the use of namespaces with it. Um, when requests come in uh, in RDF XML or RDF JSON uh, resources attributes, they're often you know abbreviated with namespace prefixes. So you have to tell uh, tell OSLC for J a little bit about how you want to have the prefix, what prefixes and namespaces your application is going to be aware of. So this is just a quick thing to, you know, set, set those namespace definitions up. Then you can start actually, you know, working with your your actual OSLC resources. In this case, um, the example that I'm using is for change requests. This is for change management. So a change, basically a change request. So what I would have in OSLC for J is a class which maps to an OSLC resource type. So basically a change request class in Java. And there's a couple of annotations um, at the top of that class where I just want to be able to say, you know, what namespace does this class map to for OSLC, and just give some um, some metadata for the resource shape. What's the title of the resource shape, and what OSLC you know resource type is this resource shape going to describe? Again, OSLC for J will will you know, generate the resource shape for you based on the information provided. So after that, you basically just um, you know define the fields that are in your in your resource. So I I didn't list all of the ones for a change request, just the first few here. But just setting those up as um, you know Java variables, and then in the getters. So, so this is basically a bean class. And then in the getters for that uh, for those. Uh, variables. You're going to want to decorate the getters with 
um, annotations for the resource attributes that has our resource shape information. So you can see here that for the identifier getter, I'm giving it a description, some cardinality information, property definition. Uh, I'm saying that it's read only. You know, we can control the read write uh, ability and the title of it. So that's all stuff that will show up in the, the resource shape for that uh, for that attribute when it's requested. And you would go through and do that with all the attributes. So I, I'm not showing the full change request here. It's quite large. But for, for each of the attributes that maps to an OS, each of the variables that maps to an OSLC attribute, you would decorate the getter with these um, the appropriate uh, annotations. I'm trying to keep an eye on time here. Um, So the second part of it is so, so that that sets up your Java object that you know represents the the resource the change request. Then you also need to uh, set up the uh, the JAXRS uh, methods. So when somebody tries to get all of the change requests, what method gets invoked? And that's what I have uh, up on the the screen right now. So we basically give the the JAXRS annotation that says you know if a get comes in. Uh, that this is what we want, this is the method we want to call, and that it produces um, RDF XML, application XML, and JSON. Th and this particular method is for when they want to get all change requests. But there's a, you would do a separate get method for if they were just asking for a single change request, for example. And you know, this method, like I said, in the, uh, <clears throat> in the CM example is pretty simple. It doesn't do any actual uh, business logic. It just returns uh, it returns the change requests that it knows about. Uh, here's what a post would look like if somebody wanted to create a new change request. The, the post has some additional annotations here. So, in addition to the JAXRS annotations here, it's basically uh, identifying it as the post method that it, you know, telling which types of media it can consume and produce. We also have this creation factory annotation there. Uh, folks familiar with OSLC service provider uh, documents know that, you know, they include creation factory uh, information in them as well. So telling consumers how, you know, what URL they need to go to to uh, create a uh, create a new change request or a new OSLC resource and you know what resource shapes are appropriate for creation. So that's the um, additional annotation that you see up there on OSLC creation factory. And you would put that on the, your post methods for, for creation of new resources. And you know the bulk of this method would really be the business logic, whatever you need to do to create a new change request uh, in your tool or the equivalent of a change request in your tool and then just return back um, as an OSLC resource the, uh, the change request that was created. Sean, I see something flashing in the chat, if you want to check if that's a question. Yeah, no, the chat is clear of questions. Okay. Um, so, I mean, those are the sorts of things you would have to do. The, the, your main tasks for implementing a ser uh, service provider with OSLC for J would be to, you know, implement your resources as Java objects and annotate them correctly, uh, and then implement each of the service methods that needed to be done to get, put, post, uh, delete uh, on those resources. And, you know, the, the bulk of that is going to be implementing the, uh, the business logic, if you will, to, to actually deal with getting or creating or updating those uh, resources. Um, but OSLC for Jake can also be used by consumer uh, consumers of OSLC uh, in addition to service providers. So if you look in the OSLC for J Wink project, I'll t talk a little bit about the different projects in a minute here. Um, there is an OSLC uh, REST client class that can be used. Um, it does the same sorts of things that we were talking about on the service provider side. 
you would you would need to have the POJO representation of the resources, the Java representation, and then the the client will handle the uh, marshaling and unmarshaling of RDF, uh, XML or JSON to your Java object, and then and back as well. So you could use that to make requests from a service provider to uh, post new resources to the service provider or update them, uh, as well as you know discover what resources are on the service provider so that you can link to them from your integration. Um, the samples, let me just talk quickly about these. So as I mentioned before, the there's an OSLC for J change management provider that's out there. Um, today it doesn't have the delegated UIs, you know, the pickers, uh, the creation UIs, the compact uh, representation of a change request. That's not out there yet, but that's something that we're working on and would, would like to get that contributed soon so that you have some uh, examples of what delegated UIs would look like with, you, with OSLC for J. Uh, there's something called a stock quote provider, which is just another sample app just meant to show you that OSLC for J can be used to develop um, providers for specifications that haven't yet been written. So if you're thinking about doing your own uh, creating your own OSLC resources that aren't in a specification today, uh, you, you can definitely use OSLC for J for that as well. The stock quote sample is you know, something that can give you some ideas. There's also something called the registry application. So uh, what that is, it's an implementation of an OSLC catalog registry server. The, um, the OSLC for J samples by default use this registry. So when they start up, they're able to um, basically register themselves with the catalog, tell the catalog that, hey, I'm a new service provider, here's my service provider information, um, you know, please advertise me as a service provider that you know about. So it, w without having to write your own catalog or your own uh, <clears throat> you know, discovery mechanisms, they, if, if you choose to use it, the OSLC for J registry application can be used for that. And the samples today uh, do use it. Um, so uh, outside of OSLC for J, what are some of the other samples that are available today? Uh, I think I mentioned it before, the Bugzilla adapters out there. Uh, it's an excellent example for connecting to the folks that are interested in connecting to any of the rational jazz uh, service providers. Uh, there's some things you have to do um, on top of OSLC to talk to rational jazz servers. And the Bugzilla adapter, uh, we call it the root services support. The, um, as well as OAuth, and the Bugzilla adapter does all of that. So it's a good example if you're looking uh, to do an integration there. Uh, there's also an OAuth sample web app that's out there, although we need to get some documentation out there uh, for using it. But sample code for handling OAuth tokens, keys, authentication. Um, there's also, I mentioned before, the, the older reference implementations for OSLC. Uh, they do not use OSLC for J, but they are good examples if you want to use alternate technologies like uh, OpenRDF or a traditional servlet approach instead of using the uh, uh, using the, the JAX-RS approach that OSLC for J uses. So there's, those samples are out there as well. Uh, there's also the Microsoft Excel change management adapter, which I think I mentioned earlier. Okay, so just wrapping up here, um, at least on the presentation side of things, um, how to participate in Leo. I think I mentioned before it's it's mainly source only. We're, we're working on getting builds of consumable jars. We've actually started that work. Uh, we are looking for developers interested in promoting OSLC adoption by developing SDKs. So if you're at all interested in participating, um, I'd encourage you to introduce yourself on the Leo Dev mailing list, um, go to Bugzilla, open up um, bugs for you know enhancements or areas that you, you'd like to see or that you'd like to work on. Uh, that, that's certainly the best way to get started there. Also, I'd encourage folks to go out and visit the wiki. There's several getting started type pages off of there, although we will continue to improve the documentation as we go forward. And there's some websites that you can go to if you're interested in more information. 
Okay, I'm going to try to switch applications again, see if I have any better luck. So while we're doing that, thank oh, yeah. thanks for the presentation, sure. Mike. This was uh, yeah, go ahead, Sean. very informative, um, and uh, I think really nice to see all the different code samples of uh, someone coming from a programming background. I, I just want to remind everyone on the phone right now that uh, we are doing a survey, an OSLC community survey right now. And uh, whether you're just hearing about OSLC today or you've participated in work groups or written implement, implement, uh, integrations or whatever your, your connection to the community so far, your feedback would be very valuable. And so I'm just pasting in a link to the, uh, to the web page on open-services.net where there's some information about the survey and you can take a link from there to actually go complete the survey. So if you haven't done it yet, please go ahead and do it if you've done it or um, if you know anyone who might want to do it um, or maybe should do it, please please uh, pass it along to them as well. Thanks. Actually, also I'll paste in um, some of the uh, some of the results that we've uh, even though the survey's ongoing, some of the results we uh, pulled up just for interest. So I'll paste a couple of blog posts on that too. Uh, Sean, I think the sharing is just not going to happen for me. Uh, I apologize. Um, let me, um, I'm going to sign out and sign in one more time. Okay. But apart from that, I don't know what else to do. Does anybody have any questions while we're doing this? Well, while you think of or type in your questions, I'll, uh, I'll also let you know that we already have another webcast uh, lined up on April 20th. Uh, Covair is going to be sharing their experiences in developing OSLC-based integration. So they've built an OSLC wrapper around their, uh, what they call their Omnibus integration platform. And what it does is it enables all the tools that they've created traditional integrations for into their uh, Omnibus platform to be exposed as OSLC service providers so that any OSLC-enabled consumer uh, can connect and, uh, and inter interact with all those different tools, including HP Quality Center, Microsoft TFS, SharePoint, Atlassian uh, Jira. These are all the different things that are available. So their webcast will focus on the technical overview of actually developing that, their experiences, uh, developing, debugging, testing, and everything to do with that. So for this audience, that may also be a very interesting webcast for you. Um, so it will include a discussion on challenges faced by the team during implementation and some of their tips on how to tackle them. Hopefully that will be uh, valuable to you. Circle April 20th on your calendar. Um, here is the, uh, I'll paste into the chat. The, uh, the announcement blog post, and if you want to register to attend, there's the link for that too. Can you try to make me presenter again, Sean? I will try again. I can see that you are now sharing. Okay. I see we've got about five minutes left here. So let me cover a couple things quickly. Uh, so I've got all of the, um, don't be overwhelmed by the number of projects I have loaded here. I have all of the LEO projects plus some additional ones I'm working on loaded here. But I just want to talk you know, just real quickly an overview of the OSLC for j how it's structured. So um, basically there's a core project 
that you would need to use. That's where all the annotation and the service provider and the, uh, the resource shape uh, stuff comes into play. There's that project. There's a um, Jenna provider that I mentioned before, so that handles the um, RDF XML and XML serialization. There's a JSON for J provider that does the, the JSON serialization. You know, if you're not interested in your application providing JSON, you wouldn't have to pull that project in. Um, there's the Wink uh, project, which that's where the, the Apache Wink JAXRS provider implementation is, as well as the OSLC uh, REST client that I mentioned. And then there's these different uh, sample application ones. So you can see the stock quote. There's a couple projects for each of those. The stock quote, there's a, a, just a dummy test application, and there's a, the change management one as well. Um, I happen to have the change management uh, provider running right now uh, in my workspace. Uh, down here you can see it along with some stuff that I'm working on. Um, as I mentioned, the, the, the samples do use the OSLC for J registry sample. Uh, the reason you see two Tomcats there is that I have those running on different ports. Uh, I'm working on getting it so that, that you know the, the application and the registry can run on the same uh, app server, but the way they're set up today by default, they run on separate app servers. That's why you see two Tomcats. The, the Getting Started documentation for OSLC for J explains that, how to configure that in your uh, development environment. So I have that running. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll just, I was, where I was headed before, was show an example of running the, um, the J unit tests and the report. So uh, I have a launch configuration. If I would just want to run it as straight J unit tests, I have a launch configuration for testing the OSLC for JCM provider. And you'll see that this you know, runs pretty quickly. And that's really you know, all there is to it. You can see the different areas that the tests are addressing. So it's doing service provider catalog tests, um, testing RDF XML, plain XML. It's doing uh, some catalog tests. It's doing, you can see the change request tests here to cover the CM domain. Does creation and updates of resources. Does some simplified query tests. We are looking for, you know, additional query tests. That would be a good area if you want to participate, uh, provide additional coverage. So, I mean, that, that's how quick it is to run the test suite uh, against your implementation. Um, if I wanted to run it as, and produce the report, uh, what I would do is go to, under in the test suite uh, project, there's a compliance folder. If you go in the compliance folder, there's some AMP jobs that you can configure to run both your your tests as well as create the reports. So I'm going to go down here and run as AMP build. And this also runs very quickly. So I've already done the build parts of this. So I'm just going to run the provider test and then create the report. So I click run. And you'll see a bunch of stuff scroll by. It won't make sense, but it'll go by in the console here where it's actually running the tests right now, and now it's creating the report. And in the um, in the report folder here, under the name that you give, you know, for your service provider, it'll put the report in that folder. I'm going to say open with my browser, and you can see that. The report was generated there. And I didn't really go through the details of the report in the presentation, but um, if you're interested, inside of the um, inside of the, the test suite project, there's a saved baseline reports directory that has, we ran the report against some different CM providers, the JIRA adapter, the, the reference implementation that ships with Leo, um, the Rational Team Concert. So if you want to take a look at, at some of the reports, what they look like, um, you can just check out the project from Git and take a look at the reports that are in that folder. I think at this point we're, we're pretty much out of time. Are there, are there any questions before we conclude for today? So there, was, there was the question as to whether OAuth handling was going to be included in OSLC for j Yes, we do intend to add OAuth to OSLC for J. Basically, what, um, what we'll do is we have these projects that are out there today, the, the OAuth Core, OAuth Consumer Store, and OAuth Web App. 
Those are standalone projects right now. What we'll do is provide some samples of, of using those with OSLC4J, provide some integration uh, of that with OSLC4J to enable both from a provider and a consumer side of things, enable the OAuth. Thanks, Mike. Uh, are there any other questions? We have uh, we have reached 12 o'clock. So okay. I would like I, to uh, yeah. I, just real quick, I'd like to you know anybody that's interested um, in pursuing this further, you know please go to Eclipse.org, sign up for the Leo Dev mailing list, and you know introduce yourself and start asking questions. That's all I have. So the video recording will be posted to YouTube, and uh, we will make a make first a blog post on open-services.net. We'll make also a blog post there, uh, letting people know when it is available. Um, we'll see whether we get it up this week. This one seems like it may have a bit of editing <laughs> that is required. But uh, either way, it will be on the YouTube site. And uh, if you just uh, check into the blog post on open-services.net next week, uh, you should be able to find it. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Michael, or Mike, okay. for the uh, the great presentation and uh, uh, the exciting stuff that's going on at uh, Eclipse Leo. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye bye.